why does it always feel like we have... Jessica, what are you doing? Exercise. You're doing the exercise? Fair enough. Why does it always feel like we're hiking some sort of hill in order to get to where we need to be? And of course, going to be doing some exercising today as well. It's a beautiful day for a hike, as well as visiting the cemetery gates from the movie Phantasm, well, the filming location that they used. We got trail mix, so we can stay energized. We got water, so we won't become dead hydrated. <laughs> How many more play on wor words and puns can we make? Time Hex to exercise. Exercise, dead hydrated, and there goes Jessica. We got I'm this. Faking it. <laughs> And there it is in all its glory. The Phantasm Cemetery Gates from 1979. Well, in the movie it was called Morningside Cemetery. But in real life, they were the gates to the Cobb Estate here in Altadena, California. I'm not sure what you would call that. Fencing? Well, the fencing arch right on top of the gate is still the same. In the movie, in this scene, you can see where it said Morningside. Of course, that was just for the movie and taken down afterwards. The cemetery gates to Morningside Cemetery can be seen throughout the entire movie Phantasm. Different angles, but you can see them the clearest when the blonde daughter of the fortune teller walks into them the next day after having a little supernatural conversation with Mike. And we also get a head-on shot of the gates, but this time at night, when Mike decides to sneak into the mausoleum. The gates are identical to the way that they used to be. And there's a sign here that says Cobb Estate Gates, restored by Altadena American Legion, post number 470 in 1996. And that's important because just standing here and looking at the gates the way that they look today, they look identical to the way they did in 1979 when Coscarelli was here filming Phantasm. And here's another plaque says the Cobb Estate, a quiet refuge for people and wildlife forever. As we are walking the hiking trail, we're going to talk a little bit about the history of this place. It's also known as the Haunted Forest. And it also has a bit of a tie to the Marx Brothers. It's interesting to see that they made it into a park and it's rather beautiful. I am loving the rocks. This whole thing is just really cool to be standing in front of and looking at. Standing on the opposite side of the gates, well, the cemetery gates from Phantasm, you would think that on the inside here, this is where the cemetery would be. Well, movie magic, it is not. Instead, it's a driveway up to the remains of an old house called the Cobb Estate that has changed hands over the years, including was once owned by the Marx Brothers. The cemetery from Phantasm is actually in San Francisco. Well, the Dunsmere Mansion. Right here at the trailhead, they have this little information placard thing that tells you about what you're gonna be doing. What are we looking at, Jessica? We are looking at 
two different paths that you can take. You can either go see the Cobb Estate. Which is what we're here to, for today. Or you could go to Mount Low, which used to be an old scenic railway that had an old hotel. And I believe you can still find the ruins of the hotel. They had a zoo! Shut up! That's cool. So we are here. This yeah. place is massive. Massive. Now I heard about this lookout that there's telescopes up there that you can overlook everything. Yeah. Oh, wow. Wow, 1895. We got some hiking ahead of us one day, but not today. It's, we're gonna do the short one and just go to the Cobb Estate, mm -hmm. this old mansion. Well, what's left of it, just basically the retaining wall, the foundation. And like I said, at one point, it was even owned by the Marx Brothers. There they are right there. And let me back up because it's, it's getting a little, there we go, there's the light. I personally think that it's because of the Marx Brothers is how this place got its name amongst the community of this place being the haunted forest. That's what do you, very possible. Yeah? You think yeah. so? I mean, they were goofters, you know, they were comedians and actors. So, I mean, they could have been just possibly filming something here, doing one of their skits or sketches, and you know, the locals could have heard some weird things happening, and so the story grew, who knows? Anything is possible. You ready for some history? A history hike for some uh -huh. exercise? Exercise. Let's do this. Bam, bam, cue the 80s music. On my boobs. And our walk begins, or our hike really, right up the old driveway to the Cobb Estates. I really love that we're doing this thing. It's like a, a hexercise video, so to speak. Cadabra. What is that? It's one of the unforgivable curses. It's the killing curse. And we've never been here before, so we're still trying to figure everything out. The driveway here obviously has to lead to the house, but there are other trails here that lead to more interesting things. We talked to some of the different hikers and they mentioned that it's a more strenuous hike this way. At some point, we'll probably take this road, but not today. We're heading to the old Cobb Estate. And now for a little bit of history about this place, the mansion is no longer here, it's been torn down. But at the time, it was this big mansion up in the hill that overlooked all of Altadena and all of Pasadena. And it was built by a very wealthy, retired lumber millionaire, so to speak. Very well known here in the community. When he died, he willed this property and the house to the Mason Lodge that he belonged to. And they had it for a couple of years and eventually they sold it and the people that bought it were the Marx Brothers. And the Marx Brothers had it for two years and they ultimately decided to tear down this mansion. <sighs> and they auctioned it off. Well, the plan was to auction it off, but there was a, I wouldn't call it like a secret buyer, but somebody swept in and they bought it and then they gifted it to the parks and recreation people. So now it's a park and nothing can be developed here. People who grew up in this area know the woods around these trails as the haunted woods. And what's funny about that, we tried to do some research and it turns out that even though they were called the haunted woods for a very long time, there were never any reports of apparitions or strange things going on until the Marx brothers bought the house and then all these stories started circulating throughout the community, which I find kind of funny. I mean, maybe it is really haunted, but the Marx Brothers, maybe it was a joke that they played, you know, some sort of legend, some sort of, you know, fun little prank that they had on the community or, you know, just something fun. And what's really interesting about this, when they tore down the house, the old Cobb estate, they were selling the land to developers. And their plan, their hope was that they were going to turn this entire estate here up the top of the hill on Altadena into a cemetery. All right, fair enough. It's a huge piece of un, you know, unused land. The community was not happy about that idea. They did not like the fact that a cemetery 
would be in the middle or surrounded by haunted woods. So there's a little bit of uproar about that. I find it very interesting. Still known as haunted woods today. We're here during the day, but supposedly if you come out here at night, it's a completely different story, a completely different vibe. So maybe at some time we will do that. And talk about views, right? I, mean, I don't know if you can see this, but way up there, there's a hiking trail and I can see people walking. I don't think we're gonna be doing that today. So it looks like we are walking up on where the beginning of the property would have started because you can see here's the um, the buds of what was probably the pillars onto the gate. So there's probably was a second gate here. Here you are right here. See the ironwork in it. So there's probably a, a second gate here that would have gone onto the property. It splits off and I see stairs here. And just imagine this giant, beautiful, Spanish architectural style mansion right here. It's haunting to see it as, an, as, you know, as a vacant lot. And the stone wall surrounding it's actually pretty, pretty long, or lengthy, I guess you would say. I almost said vast. I don't really know what I would be saying there, but lengthy. Wow. So, I don't know where the house would have stood, but that goes on to the property. It looks so modern because somebody painted it at some point to put gray paint over it, but most things that we live around today, we don't realize we're built in the 30s, you know? We just think it looks modern. Mr. Cobb, the guy who built this mansion, who's responsible for all this, was actually pretty legendary in his own right back in the time. At one point, there's a story, it even made the news, the newspapers, that one of the fires, the legendary fires that came rolling through California, came so close to his house that it threatened the very, you know, nature and structure of it, that old man Cobb, he was like 80 years old, went outside with a hose and was watering down everything to try to protect his home from the fires. Neat little stories like that, a little history, local history. As we walk the perimeter of the property, there's paved roads that go in either direction off the main road. And everything is so decayed and crumbled that I feel like I'm walking the ruins of Return to Oz when she finds Emerald City broken and decayed because everywhere I look I'm like oh property wall I want to go over there you know it really feels like return to Osby right now you can only just imagine taking a step back in time all this property the, the mansion that used to be here right look at this this is an old burnt tree was this from his time or recent this is burnt both of these trees have been burnt but they've grown over it there's more wall down that way. This place was massive. Looking at the dirt path and the two palm trees, I feel like I'm in the movie Day of the Dead, kind of, which was filmed 3,000 plus miles away over in Florida, in South Florida. But it kind of has a Day of the Dead feel to it, doesn't it? Now, this is rather interesting. It looks like there's a street sign up here. Almost like a bus stop. No motor vehicles, something. Holy cannoli. Look at that view. Oh, wow. <sighs> oh. That, my friends, is beyond beautiful. Obviously, Jessica and I aren't trying to create an exercise video, or as we like to call it, hexercise. We're just trying to be a little bit more healthier and change our habits here in our new home in California. The beginning of this video, we talked about the gates, how Don Coscarelli chose to film those as the cemetery gates in Phantasm, Morningside Cemetery. But in real life, 
there are the gates for the old Cobb estate that used to stand here up in these hills. Don Coscarelli in the late 70s filmed pretty much all of Phantasm here in Southern California, except for one major pivotal, pivotal scene and that's up in San Francisco. It's called the Dunsmuir Mansion. At some point, we're gonna be up there visiting that. Ever since we did a filming location video on the hanging tree, about a week or so ago, I've been getting all kinds of different messages saying, hey, you should go to the fortune teller's house or you should go to Mike's house. That'd be all good and dandy. The thing about that is, all of that stuff has been torn down. It's either a vacant lot now or something. So there's really nothing to see. So. We're trying to hop, skip, and jump throughout California, visiting what's left when it comes to Phantasm, this being one of them. There's more to come. I don't know how much further we're gonna make it up the pathway here. We can at least go up around the bend to see what's there. This is just breathtaking, just to be able to get outside and see this every single day. We passed a couple different hikers along the way. And they said if we would have taken the other path, it would have taken us to an abandoned hotel, which we'll have to check out at a different time, as well as an old railroad trestle that kind of just drops off to where they, I guess, built Pasadena. Still learning all this stuff. But we'll make it at some point. Looks like we made it to a fence of something. Some kind of a secret compound. Yeah, what is this? This just seems not right. What on earth is this? I don't know, but like Jessica said, it looks like some sort of secret compound, doesn't it? From this angle, you can see hikers on the trail over there on the other side of the mountain. Looks like that V, like a greater than, less than sign. That's the trail. Hey baby goal, I have a question for you. Now let's say the Marx Brothers, who are known as tricksters, mm -hmm. didn't put rumors out that this place was haunted, that the haunted forest really is a haunted forest. They say that coming here at nighttime, it's a different feel, it's a different kind of spookiness to it. Would you come out here at night and would you do some ghost hunting? I think I would. Um, I mean, forests are always really creepy at night. It's just their nature, but um, I'd probably be at least a little bit of a scaredy cat, but I would totally come out here. I'd, I'd love to see those gates at night. Oh gosh, yeah. Down at yeah. the beginning, I would love to see that. And uh, kind of sit and listen. Right? Because you don't know who else is out here and the animals that are out here. Since we've been in California, we've seen two wild coyotes. And uh, I think there's probably a great deal of life in these woods. Maybe some undead life. Dun dun. Tell you one thing though, if we do come out here at night mm -hmm. or if anybody comes out here at night, they have to watch where they step because it is steep. Pretty much everywhere you walk on every trail, lines a, a cliff canyon. a canyon yeah. of some sort we are many hundreds of feet up the mountainside and were you to fall from this you would not recover and just stay to the center of the road or a hug to the side of the mountain otherwise you could possibly accidentally roll off the end because there's a lot of rocks and it looks like it's still crumbling a bit from the cement so just be careful and with that thank you for joining us on another adventure and as always, happy Halloween. Wherever I come, I've had luck. Just come my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always coming my way. Did you 